Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Tuesday, March 13, 2018. In the news tonight, government loses case at CCJ, $30 million awarded to Clarissa Real. Supply fire leaves a family of seven homeless. Top cop distances himself and again a police force from the Lindu Creek massacre. And in court, man denied bail after being charged for raping his underage female relative. With the details of these and other stories, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for joining us. Now for the news in details. The government has to again dole out a youth sum after losing a case that was taken to the Carbon Court of Justice. The matter involved the acquisition of private land by the government. Nickel John opens tonight's newscast. The government of Guyana was taken to court after the Attorney General invoked the Acquisition of Lands for Public Purposes Act to assume control of the plot of land on Middle and Carmichael Streets. The purpose was to construct government buildings on the land that belongs to Guyana's High Commissioner to Canada, Clarissa Real. The coalition government made a decision in 2016. The matter was brought to the High Court and the Court of Appeal for deliberation until it was referred to the Caribbean Court of Justice. In its oral decision this morning, Justice Dennis Barrow of the Caribbean Court of Justice said the CCJ has heard of the Court of Appeals' decision along with its arguments. Justice Barrow noted that the process was delayed as the case was filed since 1997. He also noted that the land was in dispute for the last 35 years. The panel of judges also took into consideration the amount of time that was lost due to several factors delaying the case. Justice Barrow says Guyana's judiciary has to be more aggressive in dealing with these matters in a timely manner. The court expressed disappointment with the process in the disposal of the claim and urged the judiciary to do its utmost to guard against the fostering of an attitude that there is insufficient concern and commitment to avoiding excessive delay. In the end, Justice Barrow upheld Guyana's Court of Appeal decision to award the Guyana's High Commissioner to Canada $30 million. In addition, the Attorney General will have to pay the respondent for their legal fees that would have been spent during the case's hearings. The appeal was dismissed. The court upheld the award of $30 million as this was not appealed by the state and this court provisionally awarded basic costs and disbursements to the respondents with permission to apply within 21 days to vary the provisional order. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. A family of seven is now homeless after a fire of unknown origin destroyed their house. They are now contemplating their next move. Find out more in this report. Ork Light is now contemplating what next to do as his house went up in flames on Monday afternoon. Light said he was at work when he received the news of the fire. The man said by the time he reached home, the house was already gutted. The father of five said, he learned that his two daughters were in the bedroom sleeping. However, when their eldest child came home from a football practice and went into the room, he saw the fire. Just one ball of fire, woof, and he just grabbed his sister and she grabbed the next child who went sleeping and the old the house. They ain't ever saved nothing. Actually, absolutely nothing they ain't ever saved. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But they didn't say how the fire started? No, no, no. They didn't say how the fire started or not. Light says the family was unable to save their material possessions. The man claimed that when firefighters arrived at the scene, they were not equipped to put out the blaze. No water. They just must spray like two seconds of water and that's it. They go back for water when they come back. The pump can't start. You know, they send for the next fire truck from Tamari. The same thing. So they must be no, no. They so called fire service, you know. I asked the chief, I said, Maria, I could tell me what really all about it. Because you could see this shop when it comes was on fire. And the man standing right there, and then the shop catch some water by recently for completed. Everything burning. 
Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. Commissioner of the Guyana Police Force, Silal Prasad, has distanced himself along with the Guyana Police Force from the Lindu Creek killings. He claimed that the police team was ordered out of the area before the tragic day. Details in this, Yanis Abrams report. Call to the stand by the commission was Commissioner of Police, Silal Prasad. It was then that he distanced himself along with the members of the GPF from the Lindo Creek Massacre. Passad, who was the then crime chief, recalled several incidents in connection with the killing of the eight miners at Lindo Creek on June 8, 2008. Passad stated that the late police commissioner Henry Green had instructed him to carry out an operation at Christmas Falls where Rondell Feynman Rollins and his gang members were reportedly seen. The commissioner further stated that himself, along with other ranks of the police force, Deputy Superintendent Withright, Inspector Lane, Inspector Narine, Assistant Superintendent Lowenfield, and Deputy Superintendent Nurse, went via road and Assistant Commissioner Clifton Hicken was picked up at the Kokwani Police Station. The ranks were also accompanied by civilians who were familiar with the terrain of Christmas Falls. The ranks were allegedly armed with guns and accessories and a boat. Passat additionally told the commission on June 5, Hickens led the rank to the right bank of Christmas Falls and after some time, gunshots were heard. Early the following morning, um, Assistant Commissioner Hicken crossed the river in the boat that we took there. Um, and shortly after that, I heard a series of gunshots in, uh, songs, including rapid fire, that lasted for a while. I thereafter crossed the river using the same boat and observed that there was uh, the body of a person I later learned to be Otis Fifi, Carl Mother, with a gunshot injury to his face or what appears to be a gunshot injury to his face. And I also observed that the ranks would have seized nine firearms consisting of rifles, shotguns, and handguns, and a quantity of ammunition. Passat admitted to contacting the late Commissioner Green relating the shooting incident where Green ordered him to retreat and informed him that they will be replaced by the Joint Service. The Commissioner was unable to provide much information after the operation since he was not aware of any police force being in the area after June 6. He further explained that a Trinidad and Tobago team visited Guyana and conducted their investigation and a report was given to Commissioner Green. Passat was further put on the spot when he told the council that a post-mortem report was conducted, but according to attorney at law Patrice Henry, no report was given to the commission. And that certainly would have had to come from a post-mortem report. Yes. Can you say who would have conducted that post-mortem report and where is that report? I am not sure. Might have been um, Dr. Nihal Singh. He was at the scene as well. And the report should have been in the file. Commissioner, from the file that was given to this commission, there is no post-mortem report, at least from the file we receive, and from at least one witness who would have testified in relation to the coroner's report, Dr. Neil Singh did not perform any post-mortem on any of the bodies. So my question still stands, whether there's any forensic or scientific proof that you could conclusively say that you have to support this alleged eyewitness story? I was informed maybe um, it could have been from a report or from speaking with Dr. Nial Singh himself, but um, all the investigators haven't spoken to um, either Dr. Nial Singh or the Jamaican pathologist, but I have a recollection that there was evidence of gunshot injuries and blunt trauma injuries. Wayne Lee, brother of deceased Lancelot Lee, was also called to the stand. Lee mentioned he was informed of the death 
of his brother by his neighbor. He further related to the commission that three days after the news, several criminal investigation officers visited the home where a statement was given from his mother and subsequently a DNA sample was taken from her as well. Memorial service. Can you say whether any family member was invited at the criminal investigation department to submit samples for DNA testing? Yes, my mom did, and a few months after, I did. Were you present when your mother would have submitted those samples? Yes, I did. I was there. Can you say what, if any, information or reason was given that they had to take samples from you subsequently? They said that they were requesting another family member because the DNA that they took from my mom wasn't showing up. It wasn't showing up. Mm -hmm. And this information that you would have received that the DNA wasn't showing up came from who? Someone from CID. From CID. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like all you know the secret. Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Start your egg sighting this Easter with Cadbury. Buy 1,000 or more in Cadbury chocolates and have a chance to win a weekend trip to Baganara Island Resort, a family photo shoot or Cadbury Easter hampers. Drop off your bill with personal details into entry boxes provided at participating stores and massive distribution. Promotion ends April 3rd, 2018. Be part of our Cadbury exciting Easter promotion now. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. This is amazing! I love your tiles! Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. Here's still with news update. Welcome back. U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil is coming in for high praise from the government for their high standard of work. Minister of Natural Resources Rafa Trotman made it clear that the exploration has been accident-free. Let's hear more from Nikhil Jondu. 
Minister of Natural Resources, Rafa Trotman, and Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Gradelo, visited the Santa Karen drill ship. Officials from ExxonMobil Guyana were also part of the visiting team to the drill ship. The visit was also significant because several young Guyanese are employed on the drill ship. Some of them shared their experiences to the government ministers. They were also enlightened about the new arrangements that government will be taking to have locals be certified right here in Guyana to work offshore. It's very, very good, very uh, exciting working here. Uh-huh. Everything is just in order, high standards. Uh-huh. You just need to follow and keep the good work. So you found that you, even your own personal standards have been lifted? Yes, it's been by, lifted, yes. By working in this environment? Yeah. Yes. Well, I find it um, comfortable working in this um, environment. Um, you know, I've been within the, sh- um, the maritime industry for a few years. So um, coming over here to the drill ship, it added a more experience to my life. And um, working with a different nationality is one of the greatest um, challenges. I mean, get to know the different lifestyle, you know. Right. But so far, I enjoy every moment of it, and I will continue. Minister of Natural Resources Rafa Trotman thanked the team from ExxonMobil for establishing a high record of drilling and exploration in the Starro block. He noted that the oil company has conducted the drilling in high standards, citing that there were accident free and no casualties. We have had seven discoveries. We know that you are drilling an appraisal well now for Lisa 5. And uh, we just don't want it to, to go abroad. And there's been another discovery because this is really an appraisal of a previous discovery in terms of measuring its, its scope, etc. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, you will go on to greater things, this, both this vessel and you yourself, sir. And uh, we would like before you finally leave our shores to uh, pay homage to your service. So please don't uh, let uh, Captain leave Guyana permanently without our knowledge because we'd like to really uh, show appreciation. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The father-in-law of the Maikoni fisherman who was found dead has confessed to the man's murder to the police, according to Sea Division Commander Edmund Cooper. The Sean Gomes Cornelius with the details. Following the police's initial investigation into the death of Dundee Mahikoni fisherman Munishwar Besnot, C Division Commander Senior Superintendent Edmund Cooper revealed to news update that a dead man's father in law has since confessed to the killing. Besnot was on Sunday night found dead aback his in law's yard. Commander Cooper related that the incident initially stemmed from a heated argument during a drinking spree at the home of Besnot's in laws. Custody. We will be charged soon because as soon as the post mortem is finished and we get the advice from DPP, we will charge. Well, the monologue um, is still in custody too. We are giving statements and we make a decision with them later, but we know the father will be charged. According to Commander Cooper, while the victim's father-in-law has confessed to the murder, the police are still actively engaged in their probe to determine all circumstances and the persons involved in Bisnot's murder. Police were never satisfied with finding we still doing additional information to get additional statements separate and apart from the confession. According to initial reports, Besnot, along with his girlfriend and his in-laws, were all consuming alcohol in the backyard of the accused. Initially, the dead man's girlfriend had revealed to the police that Besnot, who was overly intoxicated at the time, fell and hit his head when he attempted to walk out of the yard. However, her statements proved inconclusive as the police were able to recognize a very large gaping wound at the back of the man's head. The the body of Munishwar Besnot is still awaiting a post-mortem examination. Upon its revelation, the police will be able to form a stronger case against the accused. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Auditing of financial documents has begun at City Hall by the Auditor General's office. In two months, a persons will find out whether there are discrepancies or the financial books of City Hall are clean. 
City Hall has honored the Parliamentary Accounts Committee and has since submitted outstanding financial documents for verification by the Auditor General. The audit is expected to last about two months. This follows a delay in the submission of financial documents for the fiscal year ending December 2016. While City Treasurer Ron McCalmont admitted he was aware of the deadline, he pointed out that there was a retrieval problem. Even though the council was in possession of those documents, the retrieval process was difficult, McCalmont explained. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, the financial documents um, were at City Council, but um, in terms of retrieving these information were not as easy as uh, was would expect it. So um, it, it took some time. And as again, I, again, I said, I, I apologize for the delay in, um, in the submission of these um, documents. Further, it was pointed out by the Auditor General, Adira Sharma, that the Council does not have a central storage location for their documents. As such, he has recommended through an engagement with the Council for them to have a cabinet to ensure audits are conducted in an organized manner. Chairman of PAC, Irfan Ali, claims City Hall has made a breach as a result of delayed submission. Some documents, I don't know if the complete set of documents that still has to be verified, has been handed over to the AG. In relation to whether the sufficiency of document is there, we can only determine that after the AG would have, get, uh, would have uh, ad advised us when he would have completed his work. And if the documents are still not there, then the breach would still be there. The breach would always be there because the, 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 the documents were not submitted within the stipulated time. And the AG has made that clear in his report also. So now that we have some indications that there are some documents submitted, we have to see now the outcome, how, uh, whether those documents provide the relevant information and whether the AG can verify anything in those documents. When we return, Linden grows to found the bonded gang in his shop with a gunshot to his temple. Beautify your home or office building with high quality aluminium and glass products from Gafours. Our products are made with high quality aluminium that is thicker, broader, and more durable than that of our competitors. Available with 3mm to 6mm glass, our line of products includes sash windows, casement windows, awning windows, sliding windows, arch windows, fixed windows, and PVC sash windows that are corrosion free. Swing entrance doors and sliding glass doors, available with tinted or tempered glass. Showcases, custom built to any size and design. Bathroom enclosures made from frosted and designed acrylic with gold, silver and white trim. Achieve that modern look for your commercial buildings with quality shop fronts and curtain walls. With 6mm, not 4mm glass, manufactured and installed by our trained and experienced staff. Now available, etched designed mirrors and glass, available for awards or promotional events. Custom made to any size with decorative trim or polished edges. Remember, for quality products at competitive prices, it's Gaffour's, the name you can trust. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals we left this advertisement blank because sometimes that's just how life is here there could be friends enjoying a meal parents and kids playing outside or playing with their dog getting dirty stains don't matter when you're having a good time that's why we suggest don't let life go blank live enjoy get dirty and share those moments with the hashtag moments of life you can be part of the new Breeze campaign. Breeze, because great moments leave stains. You can be a
millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. A 32-year-old Lyndon Grosser was discovered dead on Monday, March 12, inside his shop. The man was found bound and gagged with a gunshot wound to his temple. Here is more from the Shanagons, Cornelius. The dead man has been identified as a married father of one, Romel Gomes, called Eddie, of Buck Hill Wisma Housing Scheme. The horrific incident occurred at 17 hours 30 at his shop, which is attached to the front of his house. According to information from the police, the victim was accosted by two men, one armed with a handgun. The police say they were seen arguing inside a shop. A short while later, a loud explosion was heard. It was then that the suspects were seen fleeing the scene with the victim's motor car, PVV 2057, which was parked in front of the shop. The victim was discovered in a pool of blood with his hands banged in front and a handkerchief tied around his mouth. He was rushed to the Linden Hospital complex in an unconscious state and was pronounced dead on arrival. A gunshot wound was seen on the right temple, a small laceration on the top of the head and another laceration wound to the neck, the police confirmed. The police also found the spent shell of a small caliber weapon along with a kitchen knife with a suspected blood stain. According to the police, the victim's bedroom was found ransacked. However, it is not known if anything was stolen. According to Commander of E-Division Anthony van der Heiden, so far the police has eight persons in custody assisting with their investigation. Um, but so far, the, the investigation continues. Um, secondly, we, we have conducted some exercise. Um, you have some people in custody that are doing some profiling and um, to see that we are able to solve this matter that happened yesterday. There's so far that we know this alone. We're checking out um, as the investigation continues. We're checking our background to see if we, if we had any situations or problems or anything with anybody. According to Commander Van der Heiden, the victim, whose wife currently lives abroad, lived alone with the couple's three-year-old son. In the meantime, with the police's investigation still in its primary stage, statements are continuously being taken, which is integral in finding the perpetrators, says Commander Van der Heiden. Yeah, as I mentioned before, you got a shop. Two persons went in there, either posing as a customer, and then that neighbor came into the shop too. After they would have left, they heard this explosion. And then you see this speedway of vehicles. Eight, Eight of them in, in, in custody. Mm -hmm. And we will find the people that committed this act. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes Cornelius. The councillors of the city voted against the new confidence motion tabled against the Don Clark, Royce and King, which was put forward by Councillor Sharon Duncan. The motion was voted down, which will see Duncan seeking for the legal advice. Here again is Janice Abrams. The councillors were on Monday afternoon at loggerheads as the no confidence motion filed by Councillor Sheriff Duncan against the town clerk Royston King was struck out according to Mayor Patricia Chase Green. The decision came after 15 councillors voted in favour of the legal advice, thereby dismissing the motion. After the motion was laid in the previous statutory meeting, King decided to seek legal advice from former magistrate and attorney at law Maxwell Edwards. According to the attorney's findings, which were presented at the meeting, if the motion is passed in its present form, it would be improper, incompetent, and of no legal effect. Councillors, I have asked, I have asked Councillor Duncan in accordance with the advice 
regardless of who the advice it's a, it's a legal attorney any counselor has a right and i think because i am involved it does not leave the decision to the con clerk and i will not give him that authority to to make the decision as chairman and nothing stops the motion from coming again if you want to bring it that and accordingly the ro the original motion is according to the legal advice should not be allowed. I so rule that the motion in its original form not be allowed to be tabled at the statutory meeting. And if there are amendments, if you still at any point in time while we go through the other motions are willing to amend your motion, it can be held as discussion. All the motion was asking you to remove the no confidence, um, vote of no confidence and have the motion fully discussed. After the councillors voted, Councillor Duncan and the Deputy Mayor Lionel Jaikaran walked out of the chambers. Duncan said his next step will be legal action. The fact that the town clerk is sitting in the meeting and, and is allowed to sit in a meeting that concerns him brings a legal advice to that meeting that concerns him and that legal advice is accepted before I am heard on a matter that was placed on the agenda is incredible. What I find incredible also is that the legal advice is from the member of a, is from the, is from the husband of a sitting council. You understand? And that isn't stated. Noelle Chauchi is the wife of Maxwell Edwards. And I find that very surprising that, the, that a legal advice would be accepted from the husband of a sitting councillor on a motion that has not been heard, that was placed on the agenda, but the legal advice is heard first. On February 26, 2018, during a statutory meeting, Duncan filed a no-confidence motion against the town clerk, Royston King. Former town clerk Carl Suba was voted out by the previous council by way of a no-confidence motion. Royston King then assumed her position. Reporting for MTV's News Updates, I am Yanis Abrams. With mounting reports of indiscipline in the primary school system, teachers were charged to accelerate positive discipline through coaching and monitoring in schools. Details in this report. Acting Chief Executive Officer Primary, Owen Pollard, says the matter has been brought to the forefront for measures to be employed. These measures are expected to boost positive discipline by contributing to child-friendly classrooms. Pollard also charged teachers to keep children occupied at all times through monitoring and coaching. But what I want to say to you here this morning is before any disciplinary measures are after the fact, and we want to avoid having to employ dis disciplinary measures. So the best thing to do is to ensure that whatever is happening in our classrooms, we fully occupy the pupils time so there would be no need for indisciplinary measures or actions to be taken. The United Nations Children Fund Education Specialist Audrey Michelle Rodriguez says children should be actively engaged in inviting spaces. As such to achieve the goal of positive discipline equal support from parents is paramount. We would like to see that every child is happy and is willing to come to school so that there could be increased participation, meaning they come to school every day on time and stay in school and actively participate in whatever is happening in school. It is a hope through the Ministry of Education and UNICEF, more schools will be involved in implementation of positive discipline. Still ahead, engineer allegedly halts work inside Kitty Market, completion again to be delayed. Stay tuned. Ultra Lubricants, the leading lubricants for tropical conditions, has been serving you for over 40 years, extending the life cycle of your vehicle's engine by protecting it from wear and corrosion removes impurities, and reducing frequent vehicle oil changes. Ultra Lubricants is for every market, from two-wheel light vehicle to trucks, construction, agriculture equipment, mining activities, and boating. Ultra Lubricants, 
world-class lubricants for tropical conditions. Distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. and available nationwide. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. SlimJet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. It stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at the Slim Jet, City Mall, second floor. Yes, it's a beautiful word. It empowers us. It brings satisfaction. And since you can now earn up to 4% cash back on everyday purchases with Scotiabank Gold MasterCard, that's a lot of satisfaction. Plus, you get a welcome bonus. Scotiabank Gold MasterCard is the card that keeps on giving. So it's easier for you. Say yes to even more cash back. Apply today. Call or visit your nearest Scotiabank branch. Introducing our new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech with guaranteed factory warranty. You are tuned to News Update. Welcome back. Allegations have surfaced that an engineer attached to the Ministry of Communities has halted works inside of the Kitty Market. Councillor Oscar Clark believes that there is a motive to delay the Kitty Market project. Yannis Abrams tells us more. During the Mayor and City Council statutory meeting, Councillor Oscar Clark raised an issue surrounding the Kitty Market. Clark mentioned during a visit to the Kitty Market, the contractor assigned to the market alleged that an engineer attached to the Ministry of Communities has halted the work internally. Clark further said the contractor related that the completion of the project may be delayed. The man telling me it was here because of cash flow, but this, this council knows that $25 million has been budgeted for this project, and this money is available, the budget has been passed. So what is happening here? Is there some deliberate attempt here to have this project held back? That's what I'd like to find out at this point. And I, the Marquis Committee, the engineer can't tell me what he's found. I found that to be the case, and I spoke with the project, um, the, the um, contractor himself, who took me through the, the market, showed me what was happening and told me why he is being held back, he doesn't understand. He can proceed with works inside, but he's told he was complete outside. And visits by the engineer have been few and far between. Mayor Patricia Chase Green said she was not informed about the allegation. I have not, as mayor, I have not, was not informed of any um, holding up of works at the Kitty Market. I expect that the works will conclude in the given time. And if there are any hiccups, I would like to see a copy of the report, um, Tom Clark, that was submitted to you, where if it's possible, if it is because of our negligence, that it is corrected immediately. If it's on the part of the Ministry of Community that we make contact with the, min the permanent secretary and deal with this matter. Because we are asking that the kitty market, the first phase, be concluded within a specific time where the stallholders can take up their positions and offer for sale their goods under a better environment. The mayor further called for an investigation since she wants the market to be completed by the scheduled time. Kitty market is expected to be completed by the end of March. The market has been under repairs since 2016. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. 
The Finance Ministry has been ordered by the Parliamentary Accounts Committee to deal with the existing breaches emanating from the Region 2 audit for the fiscal year ending December 2017. Among the breaches is the use of funds allocated for current expenditure for capital works. Here's more. There have been a number of breached protocols in Region 2's Regional Democratic Council as unearthed by an audit conducted. Atop of the breaches is the use of funds allocated for current expenditure, as pointed out by the Finance Secretary, Hector Butts. While this is acceptable, the prescribed conditions were not followed by the head of the budget agency. As such, a breach was committed by having those works executed without authorization from the Finance Minister. The use of current allocation to fund capital is acceptable by section 20, 22 one second 22 b however that use must have must be authorized it must have the approval of the minister yeah. it's stated in section 28 appropriation allotments that have been approved pursuant to section 27 3 shall not be varied or amended without the prior written approval of the minister. Chairman of the PAC, Air Finale Lambaste, the accounting officer, for his lack of interest in adherence to abiding standards. As such, he pronounced that the breaches be dealt with by the finance ministry through the finance secretary. And when the accounting officer say to you that we know what the rules are, but out of excitement, we went ahead without adhering to the rules, I worry, I worry, and we all should worry. However, at this point, I would recommend to members that, and I hope the finance secretary would utilize the sanctions and whatever is available to him in relation to this matter. Prior to this, Regional Executive Officer of Region 2, Rupert Hopkinson, admitted to executing a number of projects in a moment of excitement. He indicated that the projects were necessary. President of the Jorachung Chamber of Commerce and Industries, Diyuda Dindar, decided to touch on the tension currently between the GCCI and the Private Sector Commission over the recent appointment of Alison Butters Grant to the UG Council Board. Butters Grant was selected to represent the business community at the country's highest educational institution. Here's Oshana Gomes, Cornelius. Following the recent appointment of Alison Butters Grant as one of 17 new councillors on the board of the University of Guyana Council, the Private Sector Commission on Monday made known its disapproval of the appointment. In a statement, the PSC noted that the decision made by the Ministry of Education to break free with a 25-year-old convention by not having an executive member of the Consultative Association of Guyanese Industry sit on the board of the UG Council was irregular. The PSC had submitted the name of Executive Director of the Consultative Association of Guyanese Industry, Samuel Gulseran, as its best choice to represent the business community. However, according to President of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, Idiyadat Indar, while not wanting to comment extensively on the PSC's views, the current tension is unsettling. As you can see, we have never, we have never had any disagreements of this kind with the private sector or any other body. So, because it's a terrific listing, I don't want to discuss it, you know, for the, I'll just try to ease our statements, and that is our official position on the matter. I know and hope that, you know, we get our positions out and we just put a, try to move forward on this thing, you know. Alison Butters Grant, who is a self-made businesswoman in her own right, was selected after concerns were raised about recognizing a suitable representative of women's interests and indigenous interests. During the post-cabinet press briefing held on Friday, March 9, Minister of State Joseph Harmon had revealed cabinet considered the memorandum submitted by the Education Minister, Nicolette Henry, and approved the appointment of the University of Guyana Council. The Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, in a recent statement, praised the work ethic of Butters Grant as she is the immediate past secretary of the chamber and has served the chamber diligently. Reporting for MTV News Update, LaShawna Gomes, Cornelius. 
Stay tuned for Court Rangdok, the Ghana Stock Exchange, as well as the Demar Harbour Bridge schedule. so much windex for clean windows all them fancy curtains it's not even christmas hi girl mind your own business i got big plans but bb your house don't even have windows hey uh, girl you ain't think i know it ain't got window yes i know it ain't got window but look mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home it Eccles, it named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind your business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. In today's fast-paced world of modern finance, with its many options and opportunities, you will need good advice and help getting value for your money. Hand in Hand Trust is the way to go. From owning your own home or business with our residential and commercial mortgages, we'll help you realize your dreams. You can also access investment deposit accounts, share brokerage services, personal trust, thrift and pension plan trusteeship, property management, investment portfolio management, safe deposit boxes, the convenience of our Cambio, Western Union and Bill Express services. Hand in Hand Trust for financial services and more. Helping you get the most out of your financial resources and your life. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. What good is history if you never change? And what good is change if it doesn't make you better? At Valvoline, for the last 150 years, we've been doing just that. Relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine. Backed up not just by science, but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do. Valvoline, 150 years under the hood. This is what went down at the Georgian Magistrates Courts on March 13. A man of Morocco village was on Tuesday remanded to prison for raping his underage female relative. Jeffers Blake appeared before Senior Magistrate Shardell Isaac Marcus and was not required to plead the indictable offence, which alleged that on March 6, he engaged in sexual activity with a child under the age of 16. He was remanded to prison until March 27. Meanwhile, a 26-year-old man was on Tuesday remanded to prison by Magistrate Shardell Isaac Marcus for gun possession. Cusbert Dick denied that on March 11, at Mango Landing, he had a .38 revolver in his possession without being a licensed firearm holder. While disclosing short facts in court, police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield told the court that a party of police went to a shop at Mango Landing and saw the defendant with a haversack. The haversack was searched and the firearm was found inside. The magistrate remanded Dick to prison until March 27. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading sessions 764.
Let's turn our attention to the Demer Harbour Bridge schedule. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Government loses case at CCJ. $30 million awarded to Clarissa Real. Supply fire leaves family of seven homeless. Top cop distances himself and again a police force from the Lindu Creek Massacre. And in court, man denied bail after being charged for raping his underage female relative. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Wednesday, March 14. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching. Have a good night.